Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive through message is Hail Fire, Heart of the Gospel, Lazarus. It's been quite a long time since I taught on Hail Fire. I figured almost two, maybe two, three years. Uh, by the way, these are the best of times. These are the worst of times. These are biblical times. And God is still doing his calamity thing around the world. Volcanoes popping off. Uh, all kind of storms, typhoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, plagues, mice, infestation, billions of locusts eating up Africa, Middle East. Nothing's changed, as I told you. These words become pregnant with more meaning as time rolls on. God is setting up his end time harvest in these last days and he's using calamity to break down man's pride and get his attention. So I just thought I thought that in the speaking of breaking down pride and getting man's attention, there's nothing more fearful than a place God created for Satan and his fallen angels. They never intended for man to go there because a man followed Satan and disobeyed God. And all creation failed and we have free will. It's our free will that takes us to the hellfire. And God allows it. And we, you have free will to go to heaven or free will to go to hell. Heaven or hell. And like I said, it's been over two or three years since I've taught, and we're in the last days. God is bringing back, and well, God is judging the corrupt in this nation around the world. It's bringing down the Babylonian system that's enslaved the world over there in uh, Rome. Taking Rome down, I mean, if you see what the calamities are going on in Italy, it's mind boggling. And he's breaking his system, breaking his, his chains so he can get freely get the gospel out. And he's bringing back his gatekeeper, Donald J. Trump, soon. Wow, well, soon, Brother J. Soon. Just be patient. Well, it's been since January 6th, so it took a year for God to move on. Uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt after he declared it through Moses it took a year with all the ten plagues and all that. It was about a year's time. So it's okay, got some time. It ain't been a year yet. <laughs> Be patient. God don't have a clock up there. It's part of the problem we've had it out over the years. He and I, I have to adapt to his time schedule. Not he the mind. He's God. It's the privilege of being God. Do what you want to do. He's the big boss, the big G. You know, he's the godfather of this earth. <laughs> Slapping it around right now. Slapping this earth around, getting it some He's the godfather. Do what he wanted. So, we aren't the boss god. He's the boss us. So he'll return, Donald J. Trump, to the White House for a second term, like he like been prophesied by his prophets. And, uh, so just be patient. He's going to expose all this darkness, this weakness, this, uh, this wickedness. All this darkness, this wickedness, this oppressive regime we've been under. This communist, Marxist regime. It's all going to be exposed. The wheels are falling off right now in front of us. He's going to bring down all these giant oppressors of ours. It's like he brought down Pharaoh and cut him down the side. So be patient. Relax. God is in control. Now, back to Hellfire. This is one of the hardest subjects for me to teach on besides giving. The two, these, this is where Satan has really sent out a lot of demonic oppression. And when you get into these areas, and it's a battle spiritually. Because hellfire has practically been, practically been scrubbed from the Bibles, these new Bibles, 
Oh, by the way, mentioning Bibles, before I get too deep into the subject, make sure, because I'm going to teach, start teaching on Apocrypha. So get you a copy of the Apocrypha book, or get you a copy of the original 1611 King James. 1611 King James. Get you a copy, or either one, I was supposed to start teaching this week, but God had other plans. He laid on my spirit to teach on this, in which is, is like a knockdown, drag out fight pretty much for me to teach on hellfire and get in. I don't do a lot of teaching on it. Jesus taught two thirds more on the hellfire than he did heaven. So, for us that are serious about the gospel, and that's the title, is hellfire part of the gospel. Hellfire is part of the gospel. You cannot extricate hellfire from the gospel. You're preaching another gospel. I just taught it. It was the last sermon, another gospel. You're teaching another gospel. If you try to be a servant above the master, you're not above the master. So many people are embarrassed about the wrath of God. That <laughs> The wrath of God <laughs> is so intricately woven throughout the scripture. You cannot take it from the scripture, starting out with the flood. Wiped out millions, maybe billions, I don't know, but I know at least millions in the flood. They only saved eight people in the ark. That's getting started. You know, we're going to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. That has to do with fire. Turn that into hell. The city the size of the, the city the size of the metropolis of Los Angeles count. Millions of people. Five sister cities. There's three other cities besides Sodom and Gomorrah that was wiped out. Vitrified, burnt to a crisp. So, I think a uh, healthy look <laughs> at the fear of the Lord, but that's in the gospel Without hellfire, okay, to put it to you this way, we have a human body. We have two legs, we have two arms, we have a head, we have a torso. That makes up a human body. Correct. Correct. Now, if I take away the legs from the human body, I have nothing to stand on. And that's hellfire. You take away hellfire from the gospel, there's nothing to stand on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There's no fear. There's no terror. There's no judgment. Judgment for sin. That's all part of the gospel. Judgment for sin. You got the you got the judgment seat of Christ that Christ mentioned, and you got the great white throne for the sinners. What are they throwing in the hellfire? That's the legs of the gospel. <laughs> Cutting the legs of the gospel off is of none effect. There's a lot of preachers burning in hellfire right now because they didn't preach on hellfire. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I didn't mean it to be sound funny, but it's, it's, it's true. They're burning in hellfire because they refuse to preach on it. They're preaching another gospel. You cannot sh sugarcoat Christ Jesus' gospel. Hellfire as much as part of the gospel as grace and salvation. Salvation, what, are you, what am I being saved from? Oh, you've been saved from sin. No, I'm being saved from sin and hellfire. Because if, if I go keep on sinning, I'm going to be thrown into hellfire, which is my judgment. Eternal damnation. That is part of the gospel. You cannot extricate the hellfire from the gospel. You're preaching another gospel. That's what I stated in the last a sermon. So many people, so many Christians now are politi politically correct, scared to death to stand up for the true gospel, which includes hellfire. Jesus, and we're going to, the reason we're going to this, I'm taking, like every time when you teach on a subject in the Bible or a character, many facets, and now the facets we're going to teach on is what Christ said himself. So pretty soon, after my intro, 
I'm going to shut up and we're going to let Pastor Jesus preach on hellfire. <laughs> let him preach on it himself. He made several references in the, <clears throat> in the gospel. Everybody would agree about the Great Commission. Great Commission, Mark 6.15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He tells heal the blind, raise the dead, cure the sick. How many would agree that's the Great Commission? How many would agree that's the gospel, the good news of salvation? Of mankind from dying in his sins, not being able to pay the debt. Christ paid the debt for us, the whole point of salvation. He paid. He stood in our place. His blood covers our death. For sin comes death. The life of the soul resides in the blood. Man sin and been sin and born in sin. They could never pay the debt. We sin in thought and deed every day. So that puts us in more debt and could never get out of. But Christ's blood paid for our past, present, and future sins. That's salvation in a nutshell. But also, we're being saved from the judgment of our sin because Christ paid for it, which is hellfire. That's our eternal destination. That's where we all deserve. How I many, raise your hand, know you deserve hellfire. But that's what you truly understand. What salvation is about. You understand you deserve hellfire. We're all sin. All the sin and falling short of the glory of God. There's nothing to good that does good. No, not one. Jeremiah 17.9 said, The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, depraved. That's all of us. We all sin. I'm the chief of us. That's why I said, I believe totally in God's Holy Spirit coming into you through faith when you accept His Son, Christ Jesus. And He do the cleaning of the house from the inside out. Not me do do this and do do that. But God making us in his image what he wants to be is the part. You've heard me say that a million times, you did follow street for I don't preach a policeman gospel. Now the Bible does tell you, because you have free will, to abstain from willful sin. That's what you come to God for. God, Christ says, from sin, not in sin. So there's certain things you can do and there's a lot of things you can't do. Because it's our nature. And now we got two natures in us. The old man is and the new man. And new man and old man is at war. The new man is the Holy Spirit that's in us. That's warring against the old man that wants to do what it wants to do. That's the essence of sin. Sin ain't I do this, I fornicate, I I'm a homosexual, I'm a drug addict, whatever. Go on and on. I'm a murder, thief. Sin is abuse of free will. I want to do what I want to do. That's the essence of sin. All we like sheep have turned astray. We turned every man to our own way. Isaiah 53, 6. That's the essence of sin right there. Now, to get you out of that sin mood, fear is a healthy thing in the Bible. The fear of the Lord is very healthy. Count, if you was to go ahead and go use your concordance and count how many times the fear of the Lord's mention, your mind would be blown away. From one end of the book to the next, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. So the reason he's saying the fear of the Lord, God is not, it's not a vain exercise for him to keep saying the fear of the Lord. It's a reason. Uh, I misquoted, oh, I gave you the wrong verse. When I quoted Hebrews um, 10, 17, or 27, I think I told you this. It was 10, 27. But it was 2 Corinthians, where the verse was 5, 11. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Not uh, Hebrews 10, 20, 20, 27. Hebrews 10, 27 is Paul talking about hellfire. And, and for us, turning our backs going back into sin where we go back under judgment of hellfire. That's what Paul's mentioned. 
So that I just mixed those verses up. So I just wanted to clear that up uh, in the last um, when I made a reference. It's Second Corinthians five eleven, the terror of the Lord. Therefore, knowing I know the terror of the Lord, I've been to hellfire, and you can get my teaching on it. I gave a personal testimony. I'll have it up uh, on the site this week on one of the social media sites. My own personal testimony. But yeah, I've been to hellfire. So I know that I started out with the terror of the Lord. <laughs> so maybe maybe a lot of these, because I'm sandwiched for years. You probably many follow tree priests for years have heard me say, I'm sandwiched between the prosperity pimps that's preaching another gospel. And the honey jerkers that's preaching another gospel. They never, ever, never, ever, ever mention hellfire and judgment. That's part of the gospel. Like I say, Christ had two thirds more to say about that. They are seen to be embarrassed. <laughs> he did mention God got a temper that'll burn fat. And he'll burn you fat. He'll put stick you on your his rotisserie and let you roast throughout eternity. Forget about it. That's the other side of God that's not being preached. And I guess I represent the terrible Lord, the street priest ministry, the hellfire. So, anyway, we're going to get started with Pastor Jesus preaching on hellfire. And I'm, I've, so you've heard me over the years tell you, but now I can show you better than I can tell you. And I'm going to use Matthew, because all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's called the Synoptic Gospels. They pretty much intertwine and say the same thing, and they already might pick up a variance of different things here and there, but it's pretty much a line saying the same thing. And so Christ is saying the same thing in Matthew, they he's saying in Mark, Luke, and John about hellfire. So we're going to use Matthew. It's about using Matthew as my reference when I teach and preach on hell. So let's go. And don't forget, I'm going to start teaching on the, um, the Apocrypha. So don't forget. I thought my Bible was here. I forgot I was holding it. <laughs> Don't forget, we're going to teach on the Apocrypha. So make sure, I, like I said, God had different plans this week. He put on my spirit, waited me, pretty much drug me away from the Apocrypha, starting, starting on the teaching of it this week. And uh, I'm trying to move on to other things. Like I said, uh, the 1611 King James, I want to start teaching out of the, the pure King James. A little bit more in that apocryphal part of it. It was in the original. So you get either get the book or get the Bible. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to Matthew 5:22. Let's hear Pastor Jesus preached. The founder of the church is Pastor Jesus. By the way, it's his church. <laughs> this is his way of preaching. He preached on hellfire. Two thirds more than he did heaven. So we gonna follow him. We're going to walk as Christ walked in his footsteps, serving and above the master. That's what so many of these, these uh, men pleasers don't understand. It's been sugar-coated the gospel to get it to appeal to the world. God's judging the world. He's going to burn his world up. Um, Peter made that clear. God's going to burn this world up in fervent heat. This whole world going to be destroyed. And everything in it. And all the memories in it. And those that didn't make it in heaven is going to be burning throughout eternity. Get that, let that register. Non-stop. I know when I went to hellfire, I thought I, it was over. I thought it was a wrap. I knew the terror of the Lord. I was terrorized. By the terror of the Lord. I was, it was an out of body experience. It wasn't even a dream or a vision. I died and went to hell. So I know the feeling of death. I know the feeling of being out your body. I know the feeling of hellfire. I've been there. Now God brought me back with great terror behind me. <laughs> And this was decades ago that this happened. This is decades ago. Over three decades ago. Approximately. 
And when I backslide, I could still feel those flames behind <laughs> burning my bar. No, thank you. I backslid and here, there, and got it off track with just that terror. And that's why the terror of the Lord is very important. It's a motivating force. <laughs> Hellfire is a motivating force to stay on the straight and narrow. That's what it's for. That's, it's, 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 it's to corral you on the straight gateway. Enter ye in the straight. That's the fear of the Lord. Be the beginning of wisdom, depart from evil understanding. That's why, that's why I said hellfire is the, is the legs of the gospel. It carries the gospel. The gospel is impotent without hellfire. It's another fact. And like I said, there's been testimony of people been to hellfire that seen many, many pastors that was there for not preaching on hellfire because you're preaching on another gospel. You sugarcoat the gospel. In the, in the offerings of the Bible, for you honey drippers, you weren't allowed to use honey. God specifically singled out honey to be mixed with the offerings. You used to use salt. Salt to preserve. God don't want no honey turned sweet under pressure. That ain't what God wants. We want a bunch of sweethearts preaching to God. We want salt. Salty Christians. You're the salt of the earth. Some of you need to crack your Bibles and reread them. To understand and get a, a healthy fear of the Lord and what His plan is, using hell fire as a motivating force, <laughs> as a motivating force as part of the gospel to keep a fire under you, to give you motivation, to steer away from sin. That's what the whole point of. The terror of the Lord is, is what we teach here at Street Breeze Ministry. Hell fire. And I'm going to let Christ Jesus preach. Because right? it's very, 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 very few people on social media and, then, and definitely none on television that I know of. Uh, most of those are sold out. Sam's and Sally's. The 33 and the 3rd synagogue of Satan. Ministers of Satan preachers, not ministers of God. And they're preaching from the Temple of Mammon. And they're teaching material things to give and get down here. And they've done prostituted the faith. And they certainly took hell fire out. You won't even hear them mention the word. Because hell fire would awake their congregation that there is a judgment. And they made Christianity another part of A. O. Ron Hubbard's uh, Dianetics or something along that line. Power positive teaching. New Age. It's not the gospel, it's another gospel. If they don't repent, they're going to be burning in the hellfire too. I mean, a lot of the prosperity pimps burning, so a lot of them that burnt roasting already. And it was the so called founders of this seed of faith and all this heresy that's been taught behind the pulpits. And they're going down to, they don't repent. A lot of them got seared hearts and been blaspheming so long, but it's part of the synagogue of Satan. And these seared hearts won't allow. And a lot of them went past the point of return for conviction of the Holy Spirit. They've been sinning against, rebelling against God for so long, and sinning against God, and blaspheming God for so long. So, this is you, and if the Holy Spirit can still prick your heart, I advise you, false prophets, and prosperity pimps to repent, and, and uh, turn from the evil ways, and get back on the, the road of the true gospel. Straight gate God. Now, that being said, let's let here uh, with no further ado, let's hear Pastor Jesus preach here. Matthew 522. We're gonna start there. And we're just gonna go from verse to verse. And I'm gonna let Pastor Jesus show you how much he taught. 
on Hellfire. Okay, this is this is pretty early in the gospel here. It's all part of the gospel. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say unto his brother, Locker, shall be in danger of counsel. But whosoever shall, shall say thy fool shall be in danger of hellfire. That's the first reference to hellfire right there. We all got the Holy Spirit in us. So the Holy Spirit is our temple. So if you blaspheme that temple that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in, Christ is saying, you blaspheme God. So you have to be careful. When you harshly, uh, you got to be careful calling your, your brother a fool. That's what he's saying. Also, be very careful with that. Cause that's where the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Now, moving on, just thought I'd clarify that. Let's go on. That was Matthew 5. And slide on down to 29, 529. Matthew 5, 29. I'm still in Matthew. And if their right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is more proper for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body shall be cast in hell. If it, now this is what, if it's a particular sin, I gave you an example. Like I said, Jesus saves from sin, not in sin. So if you come to Jesus, you're putting yourself on the altar, you're picking up your cross, the cross is only good to die on. You're dying to your sinning flesh, your sinning nature, I will, I will do this. It was sin that put cards on the cross. So you don't want to re keep reoffending God. Like I give you an example. If you're doing a sin, and you know, because the Holy Spirit is going to convict you. Like I said, I ain't your policeman. But I give an example. Uh, you're an adulterer. And you come to Christ. And you're still screwing around on your husband or your wife or and, and sitting up in church. Hallelujah. You are no more saved than a frog on the wall. And you're going to hell fire. I tell you point blank. Christ saves from sin. Now that's in the Bible. It says we put him and we crucify him afresh if we continue in the That's just one of it. It could be homosexuality. I don't care what it is. A lie. The Bible says put away lie. We know when you're lying. Speak the truth to one another. God deals with the truth as Satan. Satan's territory is the father of the lie. That's his camp. So you want to get out the sin in camp or a particular sin that you're doing and you know you're doing it because the Holy Spirit is going to bet you that it's wrong. Like I said, I'm not your holy, the Holy Spirit will do that. That's why I don't get into the ball. I just preach. Thus said the word of the Lord to try to inspire faith in God's word. To prove it up God's word in various ways. To inspire your faith. And you and God work it out. Bible said we work out of salvation with fear and trembling, phobodos and traumatos. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the fear and trembling is there for a reason. Fear of hellfire. <laughs> you ain't safe until you're in heaven. Neither one of them, neither including me. I'm not safe till I'm over there. I'm always a danger, Brother Jay. Backsliding, going to hellfire too. And it'd be worse for me because I know more. When much is given, it's much required. So I'm going to burn and roast at a higher temperature and in a worse condition than maybe you, because I know more. And I've been to had a tour to hellfire, so I have no excuse. There's <laughs> nothing I can say in front of, standing in front of the big G. <laughs> it's like, what do you got to say? Nothing. I was guilty of the story. It's nothing. I guess no pleading the case. And I, I know better. <laughs> so I'm just telling you. Christ saves from sin. All right, so if you got something to defend you, like if it's your eye, pluck it out, throw it away. That's what Christ is saying. Remove that which is going to alienate you from God and put you in hell fire. 
So let's hear Pastor Jesus preach again so you understand what's clear. God's a holy God. Now, I've taught on holiness several times throughout in different ways. Like I said, I'm not a policeman. I just say the Holy Spirit will do it. That's the only difference between me and the moral police. <laughs> the, the, the Moses Torah police. Well, I'm not one of them. You can't mix the law. And you need to be back over there with Brother James. Uh, the every night. And get by teaching Paul versus James. Paul was about grace and letting God do the work. And then so was Brother Jay. And then the Holy Spirit come in. Do the job. There are some things you can do to refrain your foot from. But the work is his. The righteousness belongs. And all the glory and everything goes to Christ. God looks at us through the lens of Christ Jesus. Not sin and Jay. I sin every day. I sin in thought and deed. I'm a sinner being saved by grace. And most and so and brother better than you and sister holier than thou. Forget that. They just sit up in church in the front row. They forget. That they're just a but bigger sinner. There's the low life crawling through the door. And they throws himself on his face and says, Lord be mercy me a sinner. No, he's a wretch. We all are. And you can get in the spiritual pride, which alienates you from God, if you forget that. And Christ said, I didn't come to save the self-righteous, I come to save the sinner. So you're in danger of hellfire anyway. If you don't recognize that nuns deserve heaven, naturally, we all deserve hellfire. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole